TBD, Justin Hunt, it's all happening. Def Jam Records made a major announcement this week. Paul Rosenberg, Eminem's longtime manager and co-founder of Shady Records, will take over as CEO of the storied record label at the top of 2018. Paul Rosenberg and Eminem started in business together in 1997, ahead of M's Aftermath Entertainment Interscope Records partnership. Both Michigan based at the time, the pair would launch Shady Records in 1999. Check the full story on AFH. AFH Home Team! This is one of the most surprising and exciting executive announcements in recent memory. Here's why I love this. This is TBD. Static Selector. The first time I remember hearing the name Paul Rosenberg was on the Slim Shady LP. Remember this skit? Hey, what's going on? This is Paul Rosenberg, your faithful attorney at law. Listen, I listened to the rough copy of your album, and, uh, you know, I just gotta be honest with you. Can you tone it down a little bit? Because there's only so much I can explain. Give me a call. Gets me every time. It was perfect. It's the perfect interlude. And was spitting the indefensible on that project. Of course his lawyer would have a problem with it. Of course you had to hide this CD from your parents on a road trip to your family reunion. Just me? Okay. But either way, when you think about Shady Records and you say Shady Records is successful, that's about as much of an understatement as an understatement can be. Let's break it down. They've released at least four earth-shattering releases. Marshall Mathers, Diamond. Eminem Show, Diamond. 8 Mile, Diamond. Get Rich or Die Trying, Diamond. 17 years, over 100 million records sold worldwide. That's incredible. Think about it, M and 50 are legitimately two of the biggest artists in the world. The labels created legit super duper stars. Shady also picked up an Oscar for Lose Yourself. Shady's an Oscar winning record label, which is crazy to think about too. Shady also has its own radio station, Shade 4 or 5 on Sirius XM. You can drive down the road and listen to Shady every day. Impressive stats for any boutique imprint. At its core, that's really what Shady Records is, a boutique imprint. In their history, they haven't signed a lot of artists. If you really think about it, past and present, give or take a couple, probably 12 acts have brandished the Shady logo, which is really thin for a nearly two decade old imprint. Granted, any situation that includes the top selling rapper of all time slash possibly greatest rapper ever definitely doesn't necessarily have to worry about revenue. Either way, from Mike to Plug, Shady's done an incredible amount with incredible efficiency. That's something that's not immediately equated to record labels or the music business as a whole. Efficiency is the key. It's important in any business endeavor, right along with risk taking. The right gamble can break big. Paul's had a few. Eminem only had two major albums, for example, on the market before he started working on 8 Mile. In the early 2000s, it was a major risk taking one of rap's biggest new stars away from the bars, hand him a script, and tell him to act. Had that movie turned out craptastic, who knows how it would have affected Shady's trajectory. But they took a risk and boom! Oscar. Same thing with 50 Cent. Shady took a risk on 50 after he was blackballed from the music industry right after he got shot nine times. Paul and M explained the landscape during the Shady Records 15 year anniversary roundtable on Shade 45. Ronald Klippock. So then cut to, to time later and you know, 50 was, was I think he, that Columbia dropped him. I don't know if it was before he got shot or after. Who kid, what was it? Uh, They dropped him after he got shot. So he gets shot. Not bad enough, right? You're sitting in the hospital, but then your label fucking drops you. Crazy. So, you know, that's not that's not an easy place to come back from. Um, he hooked up with Shah and he hooked up with Theo, um, his his lawyer at the time. And Theo was uh one of my one of my close associates and partners and started feeding me the music like, yo, I know you know about 50, but you have to hear the new shit he's doing. And I'm like, new shit. I don't even know he was going to be rapping anymore. Like, you know, right. the, the word had reverberated around the industry that this guy was, you know, pretty much a rap. So I was checking it out and I was like, whoa, this is pretty crazy. I'm going to let Marshall hear it. Marshall was was f we were still filming eight mile at the time. Mm -hmm. And he was we thought, hey, if Dre likes this, he'd be a perfect partner for this mm -hmm. since he has been through the craziness since he does make the best beats in the world. Since if he's feeling this, it would be a, a, a perfect sort of match. Bulletproof 50 would go on to break big, that's obvious, no need to dig too deep into that one. But it's the type of artist that Shady signs that's compelling. They never signed shiny, swaggy type rappers. They built their reputation on grimy, lyrics first MCs that live off of storytelling and hashtag emotional depth. 
D12 told a ton of zany drug tales on both Devil's Night and D12 World. Slaughterhouse, a true lyrical supergroup comprised of super MCs, Nuff said. Yellow Wolf is like a rapping Johnny Cash spilling visceral narratives through intricate rhyme schemes. It doesn't get much grimier than the label's newest signees, West Side Gun and Conway, straight out of Buffalo. Roll the clip off. Too grimy with the VHS tape. I love it. If you haven't heard of them, punch yourself in the face. Definitely check them out. But Obi Trice, Obi Trice too. Obi Trice is one of the most underrated artists of the new millennium. His debut album Cheers went platinum. His follow-up Second Rounds on Me is better than is given credit for. Ballad of Obi Trice was my joint. Roll the clip out. A door just speak through the EQ, just say I got a hot sequel. When niggas on the block, got a E, got a cop, got a cop, when they cop by the cops. Young two blocks, laid in the box, or they age in the cell blocks, fade away. Brick walls, steel gates, can't wait for the day to be free. That's why. Check it. I'm a huge fan of Obi Trice. He's definitely an unsung MC. Definitely gonna do a piece on him in the future. But Shady Records brand is constant. You know what they stand for. Lyrics first. They've been frugal about the artists they've signed while still consistently putting numbers on the board. Not everything hit. Bobby Creekwater, Cassius, Stat Quo come to mind. But what company bats a thousand all the time? We know what the Shady Records brand stands for. We know what it means. And that's something always equated to golden era Def Jam records. Artists like DMX, J.O. Felony, Rockefeller was distributed through Def Jam at one point. Murder Inc. was distributed through Def Jam at one point. Vidi Vidi Vici Ja Rule, back when he was Ja Rule and it was fresh. Method Man, Red Man, Public Enemy, Warren G. They always had a lineup of artists that you felt like would rip your face off in the cypher. You knew what Def Jam meant. Shady Records is probably the only label right now that you can take a video game like Def Jam Vendetta and put Shady Records Vendetta in its place because they have those type of artists. Sincerely, what other label has ever signed two people that got shot in the face? Shady Records has signed two people that got shot in the face. You know what this brand means. You know what it stands for. Check this clip from Joe Budden. He tackled this really well this week on Everyday Struggle. Ak. Paul is the perfect person to man that seat if I'm going by some of the old ideologies and some of the old things that Def Jam stood for, which is bars, rap, they're not hit chasing. Like they don't spend 100% of the time hit chasing. They, they still have some integrity a little bit. And Paul has all the integrity in the world and he has the ear to listen for that. So I do like that over there. Paul has all the integrity in the world. The point is this, everyone I've ever had a conversation with about Paul Rosenberg speaks of him incredibly highly. He's from the Dr. Dre, Jimmy Iovine, Defiant One's lineage. He's an artist first manager who lets the artist be the artist and is great at finding personalities that can also tell great stories. He's a risk taker who runs an efficient ship to the tune of a hundred million units sold worldwide. He's incredibly smart. If you can't tell, I'm incredibly excited about this announcement. Plus the landscape feels poised for major label emphasis on real rap. The streaming era is the singles era, yes, but artists like Vince Staples, Logic, J. Cole, Kendrick, Joey Badass, Action Bronson, Danny Brown, these guys have found tremendous success with the lyrics first approach. If you think about it as well, on the outside, our political landscape is more polarized than ever, which always bleeds into the art. R&B is back in style. Hell, even TRL is coming back soon too. Things are looking more 90s than I can remember and it reminds me how much lyrics matter. And now there's market validation to justify a more focused approach to that style of rap. Paul built a very distinctive brand with shady records. You know what they stand for, just like you knew what Def Jam stood for in the golden era. This makes sense. There are a few things that we're still waiting to see. Shady Records has never signed an R&B artist, for example, so we'll have to see how that plays out. Plus, major labels are massive companies and behemoths value bottom line over everything. The boutique label approach will have to expand. Fortunately, there isn't a history of Paul swimming outside of his depth. Sincerely, sincerely, right now, right now, if you really care about real rap, if that's what you rock with, then who's better as CEO of rap's most storied record label than Paul Rose? Rosenberg. I don't have the answer to these questions.
Another Saturday, another TBD. Thank you for rocking with us each and every week. We appreciate it again. This is one of my favorite stories in a very long time. I'm excited to see what happens with Def Jam with Paul at the helm. I'm also excited to see what happens with Shady Records and whether M or Shady is going to eventually move over to Def Jam. Right now, they're still underneath Interscope. Uh, the people I talked to this week couldn't confirm it nor deny it, so we have to wait and see how this plays out. Everyone's under the UMG umbrella, so it doesn't seem like there's that big of a difference. We'll see what happens in the future, but let's know what you think about this story, and also let me know what your favorite Eminem album is, and whether or not Obi Trice is underrated. I think he is. Am I wrong? Let me know. Also, AFH, Ambrosia for Heads, we just launched a new show this week called Last 7, counting down the top stories over the last seven days, hosted by yours truly. Links in the description. Make sure you check that out. Big shout out to my brother Run P. Run P was a DJ on the radio show Bodega Radio back in the day that I hosted. He just landed a dope gig over at Translation, which is Steve Stout's company. Congratulations, brother. Like and subscribe to the channel. Hit that bell. Hit that bell. Follow at the company man on everything. This is just a glimpse into the paradigm shift. TBD. There was also something to be said about the same credibility factor that Dre gave to me. Yeah. We could use that with Fifth. But for anybody who didn't like me or was like, oh man, now, you know, what's going to happen with Fifth? I don't want him to not get a chance by certain people, whoever, by turning the radio off or not even buying it because, oh man, he's with him. You know right. what I'm saying? Like, I wanted to make sure, like, we make this shit official and Dre putting his stamp on it makes it even bigger for an even bigger audience because now you got Dre's fans, you know what I'm saying? Between the two of us, man, let's try to, if we link up, this could be a crazy idea. Anything could happen. Anything could happen.